welcome back to Kingdom of Nerds Sunday comic book show, which I had a name for it between the covers, but people said that was a little too spicy. <laughs> really? Sorry, yeah, because the tagline, the tagline, tagline was between the covers where everybody comes to celebrate the hobby. A little spicy, just a little. A little bit. I'm, I'm joined here today by Taladia Plays and Jared from Comics League. What's up? What's up? Hey, what's up? Too much soup. What's going on, Terry? Later on, I will be posting links to their channel so you guys can follow them, get their subs up. And they have really great content, a lot of DC talk, a lot of um Marvel. Marvel, really, from you? Seriously. I sometimes yeah. I sometimes approach Marvel like we had to cover yeah. X Men ninety seven. We just had to. yeah, we had to cover uh, X Men ninety seven. Since, since you brought up X Men ninety seven, what do you guys think of that? That was awesome. It was awesome. It really like, lived, <laughs> I'm surprised by how good that was because the MCU has been really failing me lately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, should, they should canonize it. I know it, it. It's it's crazy. I think the. I think it's been long enough. We can spoil. We can talk about spoilers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, what did you guys think of the way Magneto didn't kill anyone? <laughs> Even because, though he had every right to. Yeah, he had every right to. The thing is, like, that's trying to convince us. It's a great way to like shorthand show he's serious about leading the x-men instead of like being a bad guy forever so he's like no i had every opportunity to just drop you into the onto earth but i didn't <laughs> and like and the fact is like uh um like with the show it was like i like i understand why he feels skeptical on the animation style yeah but like what is so cool? It was just the theme song at the beginning. They made Cyclops cool again. Cyclops when has always he, been cool, damn it. But when he cushions his fall with his concussive blast, I was like, "Whoa! Why hasn't he done that before?" That's the I know question. he he should totally do that in the comics, and it's just like, wait, what? Like all of a sudden, on all the social media, everyone was like, "Oh, Cyclops is so cool, it's so good!" I'm like. Cyclops has been cool for the last 30 years. I don't care what Joe Zuling says. If he's watching, he's not the worst summer's brother. He's not the worst X-Men. And he's not an asshole. Well, he might be an asshole. Occasionally he is. <laughs> Occasionally he is. Let's face it. But I, I, I didn't think they were going to get so quickly into the whole Madeline Pryor, Jean Grey storyline. That was like Whoa, when she walked in the door, I'm just like, what? This is also a good. So, uh, the other thing that they could do, which I noticed in the intro, they have Emma Frost there. I'm like, if yep. they bring her to the X Men, they could do the whole affair thing with Cyclops because that's because she became an X Men between when the show ended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm looking definitely looking forward to the next episode, the next episode because I know. If Madeline Fry is there, Mr. Senator is not far behind. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hopefully, a good time. Hopefully, I mean, people stop complaining about Gambit and his crop top, crop top that he's like, wearing. He's worn stuff like that before. It was the nineties. Everybody wore that. And I'm gonna say this right now. I'm gonna put it loud on blast. This is for the people of last night, right? X Men ninety seven. Uh, X Men ninety seven is better than the purple trailer. Facts. <laughs> yes, I couldn't believe people actually want to uh, vote for the top story of the week being the purple crayon trailer. With... Wait, what? Yes, on on yes. Uh, Max's what? show, there was a whole <laughs> block of people that wanted to vote for Zachary Levi's movie, The Purple Crayon over X-Men 97. Of course, they didn't have enough votes, and X-Men 97 was the number one sh uh, pick of the week. Yeah, of course. Because it's X-Men freaking 97 instead of Harold in the purple crayon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love that Fallout trailer. Mm -hmm. But 
I, I figured I'll um I haven't I haven't done a Sunday show in like two three weeks. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Blue Jay, we're just making we're just making oh, it perfectly we're clear. Talking about the crew, we're, we're just making it <laughs> we're just making it perfectly clear. After my DMs, were, my notification was blowing up because about the stupid trailer. Perk was so mad he went and made a clip and called everybody out. <laughs> yeah, I think the sent me that. That's hilarious. Oh, uh, let me just say this. I'm sorry, little purple raptor. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but um you, you let's, probably let's, seen it. Probably, I did see it. Let's uh I'm gonna show up some some pickups I got this week mm -hmm. from my friend Kyle. I bought some comics off of him. Hey, ignore the oh. I took it off. Um, geez, I bought a lot from. I got um Batman six six six. Nice. Oh, the that's a nice pull. Up. Future Damon Damien as Batman. That's a nice pull. Uh, Batman in fifty two. Yeah, there yeah. you go. The so, best era of DC. Uh, I, fight me on that. <laughs> Blue Jay. I don't know if it was a joke or not, but it wasn't funny. <laughs> it was we got um six fifty eight Batman. Sweet. Then we have um Batman six eighty the Joker variant. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the sweet cover. Mm -hmm. Uh, six fifty six the first. I want to fight anybody that says first full appearance of Damien. Oh, cool. Yep. 655, he's in the shadow with a cloak, doesn't count. And 657, the first cover appearance mm -hmm. of there Damien. And I got some books back from CGC, rated uh, Showcase 94, the 9.8. Nice. Uh, Adventures of Superman 517, 9.8. Hey, there you go. Superman with long hair. <laughs> the mullet. Can the we get mullet. that in the movie? I kind of want that. I think I think people want that. Mm -hmm. Um Shaz Power Shazam, the DCU variant, which is really hard to find, a 9.8 mm -hmm. with Mary Marvel. Dope. Uh, I got some more recent books grid graded. Um Power Girl number six, the Dan Panosian variant. Oh, sweet. I love that. You know. The spicy, <laughs> very spicy. Very Blue spicy Jay, take, cover. take a picture, Blue Jay. <laughs> we like that for research purposes. Thrawn Alliance is number two. Oh, there you go. An animation variant. Ah, nice. Uh, two books, next two books are very spicy. Elvira meets HP Lovecraft. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy! As soon as you said meets HP Lovecraft, I'm like, oh god, here we go, what? here we go. Blue Jay, Blue Jay is just like very spicy. There you go, Blue Jay's dropping a picture. On the <laughs> I got two of those. Take a picture, enhance, enhance, enhance. <laughs> uh, Miles Morales, number twelve. I, I, I like this variant a lot. The red, That's a cool one. The sky here, and then finally, Birds of Prey, number six, number five. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. Hey, you guys want to show off anything you got? Yep. Right. Yep. What'd you get? What'd you get to Lydia? Of course, I picked up All Star Superman. Nice. Omnibus, the trade paperback. I got Superman Unchained and Earth One nice. as hardcovers. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to pick them up because they could fall down. I don't want to. And I don't have a bookshelf like Jared. Like Jared's got like a big bookshelf yeah. right now, and I want something like that in my room. What'd you One pick day, up? Claudia. You have what a lot, a lot of stuff, a lot of novels and oh. omnibus. What'd you yes, get? What'd yes. you get? So I got the the uh, origin of Electric Blue Superman, Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, the the Ms. Marvel years. In other words, the era that I actually like Carol Danvers. <laughs> the early 80s, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Creature Commandos. Ooh. New Teen Titans Volume 1, Omnibus. Nice. And the first three hardcovers of the original run of Witchblade. Wow. Spe speaking of very spicy covers. 
<laughs> she, she barely had anything on. Yeah, I know. It was the nineties. It was the nineties. So I, th- I guess we'll start out with some um, news topics of the week. Only a few topics, then we'll get into some comic book and video game talk. So. Oh yeah, we got, we got. I got some video game talk to talk about. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> he got four cameras up. <laughs> Please hit that like button. He has them subscribe. in every angle. <laughs> Please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you're watching on X, Twitter, or whatever you call it, hit that hit the link in my profile and come over here and give us the watch and likes over here. Oh boy, yeah. we got, we hey, we got mama, mama we got mama bear in the building. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> now it's gonna get spicy. Yes. So first, first off, the never-ending story, the beloved children's fantasy novel that was famously adapted into a cult 1984 is being revived for the big screen through multiple live-action films. So they're creating the never-ending verse? Yes, the verse that will never end. <laughs> Why? Can Hollywood just come up with regular, with new ideas instead of constantly ripping off what was done in the past? Dude, when I saw this, I was just like, what? I'm like, it's been literally 40 years. Mm -hmm. And now you want to do, I know they did a sequel, but now you want to reboot this? Come on. Leave a tray alone. I don't want to see any CGI messed up flying dogs in my movies. Yeah, and you know that Hollywood is never going to properly adapt it because it's Hollywood. So I'm like, I, I don't trust the, the current creatives in Hollywood at all. Why would yeah. you? Vince is right. Hollywood has been doing remakes basically since its inception. True. That, that, yeah. that is moderately true. Blue Jay, we know what type of movies you want to make. <laughs> <laughs> the spicy ones. I, I love the first one. I hardly remember the the sequel. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't mind. I don't mind a remake. As long as they don't mess it up. And maybe they can even make this a horror movie. Mm. Oh, there you go. Like that. Like the Winnie the Pooh movies. <laughs> the never ending story. Blood, guts, and honey. <laughs> that would be so good. <laughs> I would love to see this as a horror movie. It'd be so awesome. Yeah, it would. Done by A24 Studios. Mm-hmm. Starring Sydney Sweeney as a Treyu. <laughs> That's how you get butts and seats. I'll tell you yes. that much. Yes. She will be the ultimate final girl in the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, next up, Marvel Zombies will be pretty intense. TV, MA, animated series. What was so great about the comics was it not pulling its punches. That's certainly what we're going for. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you, because if you try to... If it, it's like when they made a Venom movie but made it PG-13. You can't you, you, you can't PG-13 Marvel Zombies. You gotta no. go full mature audience thing, because that's part of the fun of it. Because how else are you going to have uh, Captain America with half his head chopped off by his own shield? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a small way for them to go with this mm-hmm. and it just goes hopefully this is Disney actually opening up some of their more popular properties to mature audiences mm-hmm. and not have everything jokey jokey goat screaming or you know just just keep Title Taiki Taika Watiti over there. You know, keep him put him far over there. away. Keep him put far him. away. He already screwed up Thor. <laughs> you know, you can put him on Star Wars. Oh, yeah, God. keep him on. Go put him. God, you don't have Je- Jedi's having fart jokes. <laughs> and people wonder why I'm not excited for the James Gunn DC movies. Uh Blue Jay says Zack Snyder's never <laughs> ending story. I would watch that. It's all in slow. I'm waiting for Zach to do a movie that's 100% in slow motion. Oh my God. People would freaking roll over and die. And just Yes, they would. He's so upset. 
<laughs> Terry Floyd, it would be a political thriller where Falcor is a congressman being just barely able to keep the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you haven't followed Mama Bay on IG or her YouTube page, please do so. She does some great artwork. Yes, go do that. Do that now. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Vince, I love the goats. The goats were cool the first 10 times they did that. Yeah. But and I appreciate you loving the goats. But I just want to see some brutal, flesh tearing, Marvel zombies just going. Well, here's the thing in a movie with a character named Gore the God Butcher, we barely got to see any butchering of gods. Kill what? One. Kill one. Only, Kill only one. Yeah, only one. That doesn't qualify you as the God Butcher. <laughs> I can't believe how badly they screwed up that storyline. Oh, because that's a great storyline, and, and I read it, and then I, I put a review on my channel. I'm like, why did you just do this? Uh, they they butchered that story. <laughs> they butchered the story more than he butchered oh. gods. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they were afraid of going too hard with Thor. Mm -hmm. Like I like I said when I saw that movie, I was like, how do you have so many comedic moments and then you have have her dealing with cancer in the same movie? Yeah, that doesn't work that well. That I don't know. It should have been two separate movies for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what happened when you let Taika Waititi Run the show and do whatever he wants and no boundaries. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but to, to go, go back to what, what you said earlier, Bruce, but yeah, I definitely think that if that this could be part of like Marvel investing more in their mature stuff, because that's part of what's been like the criticism of like Marvel movies forever is that they're too jokey at times. And yeah. then when Zack Snyder does something different, people freak out about it. But my point is, is like, it's like um, they can kind of do uh, bring people back with this, hopefully. I think um, between X Men '97, this, and what else is coming out? This oh, Deadpool. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they have a surefire way to regain the trust of half of the Marvel audience that they lost. Mm -hmm. In the last year or two, with yeah. um, what was that phase four, phase five, mm -hmm. whatever phase we're in right now? As long as X Men doesn't drop the ball, because remember, we're only reacting off of two episodes. And I yeah. said this on my show I'm like, they could have like a great start and then just boo, go right down. I, I don't think so, based upon the fact that even though Bo DeMeo was fired, he was involved in seasons one and two. So for the most part, if it keeps like this, seasons one and two will be good. Hopefully. Yeah. I I've been wrong before, but hopefully. <laughs> you know, um, who knows why he was fired, but I know he wrote the second season mm -hmm. before he was fired. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, it's going to take a lot for them to gain a trust back of fans mm -hmm. and maybe if they start introducing storylines from the comics mm -hmm. you know there's so much history that marvel has that they could use and all the right has to do is just modernize it update it a few tweaks here and there and you have a hit movie well the problem with it is that the way the landscape of the mcu is set up right now you have the D l l l listers in charge. You don't have Cap. You don't have Steve. You don't have Tony. You 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 refuse to do a Hulk movie, even though <laughs> everyone's been calling for world for like World War Hulk. But it, it's like you don't have the draws anymore because as much as I like Sam Wilson, mm -hmm. he's not that much of a draw for for a movie. Yeah, at least I don't think. Well, I I guess this will be his test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when he um, when um, what was it Captain America four, mm -hmm. whatever they're calling it now? Mm -hmm. A brave new world. Brave new world. Mm -hmm. You know that that'll be awesome. If mm -hmm. you know if 
if people actually accept him as Captain America because I don't think um, Chris Evans is coming back to the role. No. 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 But with the multiverse, they can bring back anyone and just cast him as Captain America. He's now here. <laughs> True. Well, we'll see what happens with um, Deadpool and see if he shows up. And if all the Avengers show up in Deadpool, if Deadpool kills them or not, or brings them back to this whatever un universe we're in right now. So hopefully it works out because with all the cameos that are Everybody's like going crazy for it. Could mess up the movie. Who knows? You never know. You yeah. never know. It's, it, again, I'm like, if Marvel keeps up to the quality of 97, I think they're going to be good. Yeah. Listen, he is Captain America. I like him. I oh, see somebody mm -hmm. likes him. Mm -hmm. Anthony Beltre. So far, Marvel did a good job with animation. Yeah, they did. That's the first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember those um, late, what was they, late, no, early 2000 animated movies they had? Oh, they God, you mean like Invincible they, Iron Man and all that? Yeah. Doctor like, Strange uh, and oh, what was it? Um, Thor versus Wolverine. And that was so bad. Mm -hmm. Next up, mm -hmm. Moon Knight Season 1 is now available for you on 4K Blu-ray. Who's ordering that copy of Moon Knight? <laughs> I'll watch it on Disney Plus if I want to. Because I, 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 as much as I like the show, yeah. it, I didn't like it enough to buy the 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 4K HD of it. I agree, Vince. I'm not convinced yeah. Anthony Mackie can carry a movie. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. I don't know. I just, I think, I think they. Um, there was a missed opportunity with um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They should have had mm -hmm. a second season. This way, people can get to know the character more and develop that friendship between Cap and the Winter Soldier. But you know, I, I don't, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what was going on, but yeah, because. If you put him in, because if you did a, a stack in season with him as Captain America, you can like test the waters with him as Cap and see if it like uh, see if it catches on. Yeah, I, I didn't mind. I I actually liked Captain um, Fal Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the way it ended, but it had some good action in there. Speaking of which, Anthony Mackie is disappointed that Captain America Brave New World won't include Sebastian Stan and Daniel Brawl. When they decide to go back to the movies, it was what it is. But I don't have my friends anymore, so it kind of dampened it a little bit. I think they should have just developed the whole buddy, buddy mm -hmm. movie and just kept that going because I really like the chemistry they had in, in the TV show. Exactly. And it was kind of funny if they brought back uh, Baki, what that does is if, even if people aren't convinced about Anthony Mackie being a good Captain America or something like mm -hmm. that, they'll show up because they want to see uh, Baki again. So, so it's like you, you lost your opportunity to have that big of a draw too. I think the Cap movie will depend on villain. If they cast a Game of Thrones, a Walking Dead loser, or Entourage, they are sunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we all know about the Game of Thrones actor curse. For some reason, they left Game of Thrones and they haven't had hits at all. Yeah. Except for Aquaman. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Orm. Um, yeah. You know, but that, that's because... Um, Momoa is there, just saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's because Momoa takes off his shirt. Let's be clear on that. Did he really? I didn't notice that. It, yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like the first shot you see him in the submarine and sit without his shirt on. <laughs> America's booty. <laughs> <laughs> Mackie or Evans? Mama Bear. <laughs> Mackie. 
<laughs> that's America's ass. That was the best part of Endgame. That is America's ass. Yeah. You're right, Ben. What was the point of Falcon and Winter Soldier? Winter Soldier isn't in the movie. You know, they, it was a, a blatant mistake on Marvel's part, but not putting him in that movie, in the movie. Because I I would prefer I would prefer a Winter Soldier movie, you know, showing what happened to him between the time he was brought back by um was it um Hydra? Mm-hmm. Hydra and the time he meets up with Cap and Civil War um with the soldier. That would be cool. Because yep. what you could do, you what we could actually do. Don't make it a movie. Make it a series. And what you could do is each episode is him like influencing like uh, certain events in history because because here's the thing: they could freeze them at the end of each episode, thaw them out at the beginning of each one. He goes and kills someone, starts a war, or stops a war, or something like that. You could see how like he influenced Marvel. <laughs> Evans ah. has America's ass. Mackie has America's booty. That's true. <laughs> Th- yeah, that has right. to be a line in the movie where he goes, no, uh, America's ass. That was the last guy. I got America's booty. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. They could have they could have made a series with different periods throughout history showing him, like, um, influence it. You know, he could have been the one that killed JFK. Oh, boy. That yeah. Would be, I think that would have been interesting. Or he could have been the one that caused the stock markets to crash in the 80s. Or He, he was responsible for 2008. Oh, God. <laughs> There's so many imagine? different... Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, he sees... You know, he's there on the other side of the moon when they do the moon landing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But... I think I think if they, I don't know. I, I don't know why they put him in the Thunderbolts movie. Doesn't make any sense to me. Thunderbolts is just Marvel attempting to have their version of the Suicide Squad because that's what the Thunderbolts are. Yeah, yeah. You know, and half of them aren't bad guys anyway. When that yeah, movie that's, that's, that's the fun because the fun part about, about the Thunderbolts is that it was a new team of superheroes, and then they reveal at the end of like I think it was the first arc. No, they're actually the super villains. <laughs> yep. Uh, next up, moving on from America's Booty, Warner Brothers plans to expand the production of anime to more than ten <sighs> series per year. That ain't gonna last. That that isn't gonna happen because one of the design that, like, how are they gonna produce ten? Like in, how are you gonna get more to, Yeah. Like how are you gonna get the investors to invest in something that you can't afford? Like you told investors, oh, you wanna make you know, obviously it's not gaming related, but you told investors you wanna make live service games and now you're telling people are oh, you gonna make live se- uh what's it called anim- more anime stuff. Well, yes, I'm up for it. Not only that, you're you you're possibly being sold to Universal soon. So I'm like yeah. he's, Here's the thing. That's why I have no confidence in any of the plans WB has announced, whether DC or anything, because guess what? Universal could, could roll in and say, we own you now. No, nope, cancel everything. Exactly. That? You know, Bucky played a role in Wolverine's brain. <laughs> what? He is the reason Pee Wee was caught in theater. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Their animation will be yep. rushed and yep. trash. Yep, exactly. Yep. If, if exactly. anything comes out at all, that's why. The only way I can see them doing this if they hire a animation animation studio from Japan to handle all of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they can pump out 10 series easy. You know, because mm-hmm. they don't go home. They yeah, sleep no. in the offices over there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a great that, idea. It would be great but, if one of these is the dirty of One Punch Man, but it's Superboy Prime. Oh, jeez. Because <laughs> I was this, I, the, um. The Suicide Squad Isekai looks amazing. It looks good. It lo- really looks amazing. And for you guys that don't know what an Isekai is, it's when you are transported, killed, or brought to another world that is not your own. Oh boy. I love Isekais. But I I I, uh, 
I just think back to the way they did the X Men animated um, anime, which was, so, which was good. Good. so good. The Wolverine and who else had one? I think Iron Man had a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Punisher. Uh, yeah, Marvel really uh, had a lot of animes. I don't know why they dropped the ball on that. Mm -hmm. Marvel dropping the ball? No, no way. Ah. Marvel never drops the ball. DC should have done something with anime years ago, but Marvel beat them to it. They yep. did, but oh, um, they DC, did actually. DC they did has sure. they just um, released a what was it a Joker manga? It was on free comic book day free the, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they're hoping to tap into the younger audiences that only like to read manga. And I, I read the Batman Justice Buster manga. It's actually pretty good. You know, it's um, it's a it's a market that if either one of the studio grabs, they got that audience for life. Yeah. That's why DC uh, is like going really hard in that direction. Do you know what was actually really good anime for DC? What? Batman Ninja. Good. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, what? Wait, Taladia, you're you telling like me. Ninja? Wait, you're telling me a Batman fighting in a mech made of monkeys is great? The animation style. And okay, I'll give you that. The animation style was good, right. but. Well, I, I I just had to clarify that because what do you mean by great? The animation that's like, that's like saying Joss Whedon's Justice League was great. Oh no! Oh wow! Palladia caught in 4K saying Justice League was good. Yes, it's all here. Clip it, clip it, clip it, clip <laughs> it. No, I didn't say that. I you taking things out of context. Sure, sure. That's what you YouTube it? does. Yeah, yeah, I was, about, I was about to say the, the internet never does that. And we got um Terry Floyd. You know, you just know that Booster Go would get reincarnated as slime, and that is an anime. <laughs> hey Brian, what's going on, buddy? What's going on? All of Marvel was good. X-Men anime, Wolverine anime, Iron Man anime, the Blade anime. That's right. I didn't see the Black Black Widow and the Punisher anime. That was a good one. That was a really good movie. Batman Ninja lost me three quarters away and when it got too trippy. Yes, thank you, thank you, Taladia. And that's objectively <laughs> wrong, but okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Everybody's entitled to their opinions, even the wrong ones. I'm only kidding. My girlfriend loves being corny as slime. She says, "Oh my god." There's a really it's uh, so many good isekais out there that it's hard to keep track of all of them. Mm hmm. You know, if, if you're looking on Crunchyroll and you come across a anime called Redo Healer, and there's two versions, the PG and the unrated, do not watch the unrated with small children or no. people you respect in the room. Oh, here we go. There are scenes like grape and other drug use in the anime. It's It's bad. Yeah. It's really bad. It's a good isekai, but watch the, the um, rated version. Don't watch the unrated. Mm -hmm. What's this? The anime where Batman and Bat Family were ninjas and samurai fighting the villains. Yeah, that was cool. Up until the point, the monkey mech shows up. And then I'm like, wait, it's that turns into Batman. <laughs> monkey mech. I, I haven't watched that one because, I, I don't know, I just... I don't know that one and the the one where Batman is going to be an Aztecian as from Aztec. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I'm like, I just I, I'm like, so DC announced its Elseworld is coming back, but it's all Batman. Yeah, of course. What? <laughs> Batman sells. I'm like, oh, yeah, they, that's true though. Well, they're doing Knights of Steel, which was an awesome series, and yes, that was a good one. DC versus vampires. If you didn't read DC va versus vampires. You are missing out. Go back, find a trade paperback. Damien as a vampire, enough said. Yeah, that, that's all you need. You know, and Nightwing, oh, never mind. I don't want to spoil it for people that have it. 
All right, next up. Joshua Williams will be reteaming with Tom Riley yeah. for Superman. Issue 16 through 21. The arc after House of Brainiac. Yeah, I love okay. Joshua Williams. And He's I didn't an know amazing Henry writer. Cavill was in this comic book. Because look at that cover. I know. I, I thought the same thing. Like, why is Henry Cavill being shown on this cover? I'm like, are they, they trying to say F you and give him a finger? It, it's it's all it's all yeah exactly it's called Batman Ninja. It's almost like Henry Cavill is Superman, and we all didn't know it. Mama Henry Bear will do will do a what's it called watch along for Batman Ninja. How about that? Oh God! After after, after Ramadan, <laughs> I want to be part of that. Yeah, but I've never I've never watched it. Oh boy! No. Oh boy! <laughs> Hopefully it's fun. I mean, he's got Roger Craig Smith as Batman, so. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if I can do this. Is it showing um, DC yeah. Batman? Yeah. yeah. Right. This is, that's this that's is the um, animation we're talking about, Mama Bear. Mm -hmm. I'm a ninja. That ninja. You too can be a ninja. Yeah, I'm not going to oh. give away of the plot, but that title is slightly deceptive, but well, do it when we do the watch party. Um, what do you think about them bringing back Be Batman Beyond and Justice League Crisis or Infinite Earths Part Two? That makes sense. Yeah, it's just it's a multiverse, and no one does multiverse better than DC. Yeah, yes, suck it, That's Marvel. A... Yeah, suck it. <laughs> wow, this is great having a two other people that are DC stands just like me. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We DC usually fans the, have to stick together, my friend. We to, usually yeah. I'm the only one on the panel and I get I get um looks and I get well, put down know, for love of DC. Well, we all know <laughs> that most of Marvel's good ideas are just rip off some DC. Yes, that is DC, true. DC came first, remember that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. Plastic man. Yeah, exactly. Deadpool. Hyperion. Deathstroke. Hyperion. Superman. Squadron Supreme. The Justice League. They even have the exact same freaking origins. <laughs> uh, Moon Knight. Batman. Yeah, kind of, uh, uh, Batman, particularly Batman with Zur and Ah. Yeah. What can I say? Marvel Marvel like to rip off DC so much so that they have to steal the origins too. Yeah, exactly. Eh, eh, true. All That's right. why DC is always superior. Yes, this, this, by the way, this this cover does look like Henry Cavill. Yeah, I know. I'm like, uh, if you're trying to, to to make us move on from Zack Snyder, you're doing a horrible job of it. I grew up reading both DC and Marvel, and later I went over to Image Comics and Top Cow. I, when Image came out, I think I bought every first issue, and then I stopped. I stopped reading comics in 95, 96, mm -hmm. and didn't pick up another comic book until 2003, no, 2002, mm. when I saw a Teen Titan, the Titan, the new Teen Titans. Mm -hmm. which was awesome with Connor and Impulse and Kathy. There you that go. brought me back to comics. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the 90s writing was so bad in comic books. So Yeah, bad. it's mainly for the art at that point. Yeah. So let's get over to hot covers that are releasing this Wednesday, New Comic Book Day. Okay. First up at number 10. We have yep. Ultimate Spider-Man number one. No, it's supposed to be on um, number three. I'm sorry about that. Number yeah, number three, the one in twenty-five land incentive. That looks great. I love that one. Yeah, this this Greg Land is a great artist, and the background, the city, the way they, it looks like Spider-Man's fallen, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Green Goblin is supposed to be good in this universe. I don't know why they're fighting. Mm. That's the interesting part of the book. Yep. 
gonna pick it up. If you ever started reading Ultimate Spider Man, you should. I have. It's good. It's really good. It really is. You know, until Mary Jane leaves them for somebody named Paul. <laughs> You know that's gonna. You know. You know who that's gonna set off, right? Yeah, yeah. we all know that. We all know that. <laughs> There's the a guy who 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 sh shows up in our chat who's like super like into John Kent as a kid and of uh, and of Peter Parker being married. So I'm like, if they break this up again, they're gonna they're gonna take away uh, all the goodwill of this. I, I was making jokes with my friends. I'm like. You know Mary Jane's gonna leave Peter for Uncle Ben, right? Oh God! <laughs> Imagine that was set up, and then that's what—that's how Uncle Ben dies. Spider Man doesn't save him. I know. I know. Um, Gwen Stacy's supposed to be alive in this universe, so oh boy, let's see, let's see how complicated that gets. I'm not excited <laughs> for her for her past sins. <laughs> At number nine, we have Obi Wan Kenobi, the Stephanie Hans Women's History Month variants. I like the use of purple in this cover, because yeah, because it's like Omega with the bow. But I'm like, the way this is colored is really good. It reminds me of like anime, the pink mm -hmm. hair, yes. the coloring, it, 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 the like high it's energy, like uh, the, it, the thing of it where it's like a lot of action. You know, and and if that's a Jedi bow, that'd be awesome. That <laughs> a lightsaber cool. bow. That, why haven't they done that yet? I don't know. They they have a whip, and the, the High Republic. That makes less sense. Well, in the High Republic, the first mate of the ship is a rock. What? And the ship what? is basically named ship. Man, and that's the name of that. Jesus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> At number eight, we have Duke number four, yes. the 150 Oliver Incentive. Yes. If you haven't read Duke, you're missing out. Yeah. Duke is really good. It's a. It's not what you think. He's not on the. He's not on the right side in this book. Well, at least he thinks he is, is, is mm -hmm. but nobody believes him. Mm -hmm. I, if you're not reading any of the Energon Universe books, what are you even doing? Because these are awesome. Uh, yes, I would love a Duke animated series. Yeah. You know, Duke is more popular than Flint, just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At number seven, we got Edge of the Spider-Verse number two, the Kari Andrews variant. I picked this because it was like different. It was like, it's weird. It's weird, weird. Very weird. Yeah, it's odd, but it fits like what they're going for in the, at least the theme of the cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like the Venom skeleton and Mary Jane, and maybe that's Gwen as cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. My wife just told me she has Disney Plus. I almost threw her through the walls in a fit of rage because yeah. I have not seen the new Mon Mando. Oh, oh boy! Oh boy. I, oh. I think you should tell your tell your wife to go to her friend's house and get to watching. Mm -hmm. At number six, we have Feral number one, one in 100 Night of Living Dead homage. If you haven't read Stray Dogs by, um, crap, why can't I think? By Tony Fleeks and Forstner, you're mm -hmm. missing out. This is supposed to be about cats, their owners are serial killers. Zombies, it's gonna get wild and crazy in this book. Yeah, yes. hell yeah. Just just think um zombie movie with talking cats with Disney animation style. It's that's the Pixar movie. Yeah. So there's like a big crossover war going on with the Transformers yes. and G.I. Joe. Really good. Yeah, they're in the same universe. 
it's it's brutal, very brutal. If you haven't, or if you aren't reading it, you know, first issue, um, Starch Green squishes humans in his hands. He's like, yeah, oh, like, so squishy. I'm like, oh, that's so good. I've always wanted to see that, but for some reason, we weren't getting that. And Optimus um, Prime has his arm ripped off and replaces it with Megatron's arm. Yep. And then you had, um, what's his major blood gets shot in the back of the head. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> and we'll get to um, Cobra Commander 3 later. There's some um, brutal stuff going on in that book. Mm -hmm. Like cats that play but not lame. Yeah. <laughs> yes. At number five, we have Miles Morales, Spider-Man 18, the 1 in 50 Grand Up incentive. This is probably that. one of Miles Morales' best covers. Yeah, particularly the fact that he can shoot uh, um, lightning. Uh, that's really cool theming on the cover. Yep. Hopefully they get rid of that sword. He doesn't need a sword. What would mm -hmm. they think and give him a sword? Wow. It's kind of ridiculous thinking cats would care about anyone. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, sweet, and now humans will leave us alone. They're all zombies. Yep. Uh, at number... Four, we have Jackpot oh. and Black Cat number one. The Speaking one in 50 Hildebrandt incentive. This is spicy. People yeah, love Black Cat. Like yep, she is awesome. Speaking of cats, as a matter of fact, so there you go. You know, she's just a rip off the cat one. Just saying. Well, yeah, <laughs> we all yeah. know that that most of DC's important characters are rip off. Of, uh, I mean, most of Marvel's uh, important characters are just rip offs of DC characters. Nice save there, Jared. Yeah, nice. I almost yeah. said the wrong thing, and uh -huh. I was like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait!" I have I would have totally clipped that, clip that out and used that. Yeah, too late. <laughs> You're right. Felicia still looks good. Mm -hmm. She's like, "Bye, Felicia." <laughs> I, I am a big fan of covers with the moon, full moons on it, so. Yeah, that looks really cool. At number three, we have Red Ooh. Sonya number nine, the one in ten Jenny Prison incentive. Blue Jay, this is your opportunity Fizzling. to take pictures. Blue Jay, this is your opportunity to take pictures. Go ahead, take it. I'm pretty sure Blue Jay is taking pictures right now. Yeah, for research purposes later. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know too many people that actually read Red Sonya. They just, collect, they just collect the covers for <laughs> reasons, yeah. reasons well, yeah. that are obvious, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At number two, we have Power Girl number seven, the Sosa Micah Women's History Month area. That's a good one. I like that one. I like that one. It's interesting how they still put her back in her traditional costume, even though they, they had her in the jacket and like yeah. the the all covered up. And I'm like, it's interesting how DC is now realizing part of what makes Power Girl appealing. Yes, because um, when they gave her the, the jacket, they made her boob window smaller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this yeah. is the Power Girl everybody knows and loves. Mm -hmm. And they named her Paige. And I'm like, no, no. Just go back to, to the... Stop changing stuff. Well, they can't have two cars running around in the same... But her name was Karen. Yeah, oh yeah, true. Paige. Mm. It, it doesn't fit her, though. Let's give her a cool name, then. Yeah. And the number one book this week to look out for is Harley Quinn 38, the Souls of Michael Women History Month variant. I love that one. That's Yeehaw! So it's Harley Quinn. It's a cowgirl. That's so good. I would love a DC Elseworlds book that it, 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 like an update on like the Justice Riders where everyone's cowboys. That would be cool. Have Jonah Hex pop up. Yes, exactly. I can just see, I can just see the joke as a, as a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Jonah becomes Batman in this universe. He's cowboy Batman. Power Girl wants to see your manager. <laughs> that's that's, that's probably why they changed the name. They don't want the character to be, a, be called a Karen. <laughs> but she also has the haircut, too. So it's like, what do you oh, want to do? You're right. 
that um can I speak to your manager haircut? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh next up, we're gonna talk about some rear consoles that if you have them in your attics, your basements, see them in a flea market, garage sale, grab them. Because they they work money. We have the Nintendo Wii U, the Legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker HD console. Released in 2013, sold for $375. Hmm. See, the Wii U is actually um, useful for something. Yeah, exactly. If it's if it was marketed correctly, it could have been a big thing, but it wasn't marketed correctly. Oh. And it, had, it came with a whopping 32 gigs hard drive. 32. Wow. Remember when that was impressive? That was impressive. My first computer had eight gigs. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, I didn't know. Wow. I didn't. Jeez, eh, it was bad. And then when the minute I, I was like uh, che checking the download size on like God of War and it says like 60 gigs, I'm like, oh, good lord. Jeez. Like my 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 external hard drives are like 22 terabytes. Mm -hmm. There you go. I need room for all my stuff. Then we have the Xbox 360 Star Wars Limited Edition, released in 2012, sold for $480. This is came with the Connect. Remember that, boys and girls? Yes, <laughs> I do. I do. I never I'm used all... mine beyond the whole. It can sign you in with, with, with your face. That's it. I know my brother used his for Netflix and navigating um mm -hmm. movies and stuff or whatever are you are you sure it wasn't for other things too just say uh i don't think they had that for the connect i don't think so oh maybe they did who knows mm -hmm. does anybody know in the audience could you watch those special movies and control it <laughs> I, I i think what you mean is that you, you would need a vr headset yeah that too but yes. still it's cool. it's good looking. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Uh, uh, I don't think it was Dusty Bottoms. I think it was um, what was his name? Crap, Dusty Bronco. Mm -hmm. That was the the Joker um, variant. Cowboy. I don't know if you guys ever saw him. <laughs> Let's see if I can bring him up. Oh, Dusty Bronco. That's when it was um, the Jokers Incorporated. Jokers from around the world. Oh, jeez. So now there's a Joker Incorporated. Well, because, of course, if there's a Batman Inc., there has to be there a... Oh, God. I forgot about Dusty Bronco. Why? Because they thought it was cool. There was a lot of hype around this character, but they haven't done anything with him since. Well, because, remember, the last time we, we, we had a big joker variant was the batman who laughs and dc put him in literally everything yeah and uh, next up we have the nintendo game boy micro famicom edition released in 2005 sold for 4.99 i've never seen it i think this was exclusive to japan mm -hmm. had to be yeah because i've never seen a game boy micro at all no. I I did back in the day when it was back, you know, popular. The micro was was one of the things that a lot of people had to pick up. Um, it wasn't as popular as the Game Boy Color or the Game Boy Advance, but it was up there. Mm -hmm. Very rare specimen these days. You get a Game Boy Micro. Very rare. Hmm. I'm gonna have to look online and see. I can grab one. Mm -hmm. I can sell it to Taladia. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have the PlayStation 4 20th Anniversary Edition, released in 2014. Inbox sealed, sold for $1,420. Okay, now that's interesting that the PlayStation 4 uh, 20th Anniversary Edition is for 1420 i thought maybe it'd be a little bit more than that maybe maybe 2000. well it's all it is it's just the color of the playstation 
television oh. PlayStation. Yeah, that's really <laughs> what it is. It's not like it's coming with any bonus features. It's just, no, it's just, uh, oh, and now it's colored white and it has a very special logo on it. That's what, that's what you're paying for. Yep. I know, but it's like the 20th anniversary edition. There, there were limited, limited versions of these. Mm, yep. And finally, the one everybody's been waiting for, the Nintendo 64 Special Pikachu Edition, yeah. released in 2000, sold for about two thousand dollars. Used. Wow. <laughs> wow, Pikachu. That's actually kind of cool. The cheeks light up. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, because you got the the feet when you click on the feet. The mm -hmm. cheek. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually not that bad. I when this came out, I already had a Nintendo 64. Mm -hmm. And moving on to hard to find varying covers that you might find find cheap. Please don't overpay for these these books. You find them cheap, you can buy them. Don't overpay. First up, <laughs> you're never gonna find a cheap copy of this though. No, you're the, never gonna no. The Crow, yeah. issue number one, the second printing from 1989, recently sold this year for $270, and a graded copy sold, a 9.0 sold for $400 on February 26th. I didn't know there was, there's actually three printings of this book. Mm -hmm. It's... The, I I can tell the difference between the first and third printing, but the second printing seems to have a lighter complexion on the cover than the first and third prints. Makes sense. Like like he's actually wearing makeup, unlike the first mm -hmm. and th first and third prints. Mm -hmm. That Miles Morales has a trade dress. Just saying. <laughs> then we have. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur issue seven, the one to fifteen Brigman from twenty sixteen, hasn't sold a copy since last year, and it went for one sixty and a nine six graded sold for three hundred and sixty back in May of last year. Hmm. A lot of these books are hard to find. Nobody was really buying Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Oh, yeah. One hundred sixty dollars is a lot for mm -hmm. this book. It's probably yeah. almost. More than the first issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Most likely. Yeah. What's next? Next we have Red Sonya issue number one. There you 2019. go. There you go. Con of Virgin cover. I, I like how it just says I the would pick this up. I would pick this up. This book hasn't you. sold it hasn't sold in the last four years. Mm -hmm. This is what we call a ghost book. Mm -hmm. I looked on eBay. There were no copies. There was only a copy with a trade dress across the top, not the Virgin. It's so hard to find a Virgin nowadays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a pet dino. I love the idea. Yeah, it is. It's a fun one. Uh, okay. But it's spicy. Very spicy. Well, well, yeah, of course, and uh, everyone uh, loves Red Sonia to, to to make up for research purposes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. Then we have X, X Men issue number one, the Clayton Crane Megacon exclusive from twenty twenty one. It hasn't sold in two years as a raw copy. The last time it sold raw was in. November of 2022 for $85 and a 9.8 sold last year for $140 back in March. A lot of these books are hard to find. If you find them, keep them, hold them. Dusty Bottoms is Chevy Chase and the Three Amigos. <laughs> <laughs> the Three Amigos. <laughs> I forgot the dance. That's a good one. In the movie. Hey, Comic Embrace. What's going on, buddy? Then we have Poison Ivy number one, the one in yeah. 100 low foil variant. So this one. year for $75, 
And a 9.8 sold last year in April for $117. This is a great cover. Mm -hmm. I like the placement of the skull. Yeah, it's a good, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Pain. So if you see any of these variants laying around, pick them up if you get them on the cheap. Mm -hmm. So next up, we get into our comic reviews. Who reads comics? I kind of do. It's kind of part it's, of what I do. So there you go. This is forte. It's important. It's forte. It's Jared's well, forte. Well, we have a lot of um, comic collectors that they don't understand that there's stuff between the front cover and the back cover because they never open them. Or right. they stop co collecting comics after a while and then like to pretend they're an authority on the characters. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I've read a I comic mean, in forty years. I mean, it's yeah. becoming a. I mean, me collecting comics is becoming an addiction right now. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. All yeah, my once... friends, I'm known as the comics pusher. I will get you addicted to collecting comics. Terry Floyd, comics are for nerds. Yeah. It, well, yeah. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> it does. That's a good one. I love that one. You're supposed to read them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> please hit that like or subscribe button. If you're watching on X, please come over to YouTube, use the link, and say hi. First book up for review is Cobra Commander number three. Did you guys read the first two issues of the Cobra Commander? No, but I read three because we were covering it here, and now I want to go back and read the other yeah. ones because it, 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 here's the thing. Each book of the Energon books has been vastly different. Like, this is straight up a horror movie. Yeah. I actually um, show some panels. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Please do not report me to YouTube for showing this. Yeah. Uh, the, at this point, um, Cobra Commander is captured by the Dreadnoughts after he left Cobra La, La to look for Energon for Megatron to reactivate him. Because Megatron is not working right now. They beat the crap out of, out of Cobra Commander. Mm -hmm. They took chainsaws. They burned him. He still went to look. It's insane. This is probably one of the most brutal comics i've read in a long time yeah same here yeah it was interesting to read i can see why this went i think um image got the um the rights right to gi joe mm -hmm. because you wouldn't have seen this in idw you wouldn't have seen nope. this in marvel or dc no nope, 100 nope. percent, because image can kind of do whatever the hell they want with this stuff yeah i um if, if you're not reading this Energon universe, the Cobra Commander, the Duke, and the Transformers book, you're missing out. Yeah. It's been great writing so far. Story's been great. What'd you think of the story, um, Jarrett? I liked it as, as far as, uh, as I can interpret hopping in in the third yeah. issue. And again, I, I like how all the books are like, yes, they're interconnected. However, they're interconnected in a way that you don't have to read, like, say, Duke to understand what's yeah. going on in Cobra Commander. It's like you can jump in e everywhere and still get the complete story. Yep. Yeah, because um, right now Duke is on the run. They don't mm -hmm. believe he's he's seen Transformers. Mm -hmm. You got Cobra, Com Cobra Commander um, taking orders from Globulus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's He's gonna double cross him sooner or later. Yeah, of course. He's Cobra Commander. Of course. Yeah, I so far I'm I'm waiting for Zartan to show up. He hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, there you go. That uh, that's imminent. You know, you got the twins here, you got the, the dreadnoughts, and you got the enforcer. Mm -hmm. Which I was like, oh, that's the enforcer when he shows up. I like that. Yeah, it was so it was, this has been such a great read. Mm-hmm. And then the next book, X-Men Forever number one, the bane of my existence. What's going on in this book? I have no idea. 
it was it's, so weird. There was like so much going on. I I if I would have picked this up and read this at, at the comic book store, I would have put it back on the shelf. Yeah, because yeah. I, I'm I'm reading this and I'm like, even though I I checked out of the Krakoa stuff and like the the air of the, of this because they're they're just getting out of Krakoa, but it's like I ch I haven't really read X Men regularly since like Dawn of X, but I'm 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 checking this out and I'm like, what? The, 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 uh, it's the most convoluted thing I've ever read. Yeah, yeah. and. And what, what confuses the most is the fact that Professor X is walking. Well, Professor X has been walking for a few years now. They fixed mm -hmm. him with the whole Kokoa thing. They just gave him a new body. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, what? And you then, you know, know we've always been in the wheelchair. They really haven't explained the four clones. They had the four clones of Mr. Sinister and Mr. Sinister. The original Mr. Sinister is now a god ai computer thing and it's so weird yeah so um, like it's what? so it's so confusing so i i i hopefully by the time all of this fall of x house of x x-men forever they fix everything that's going wrong with the x-men in the last 10 years but this i do like this part right here when yeah that's they, cool the knives and pins into the wall. Yeah, uh, I'll admit that was pretty dope. And I like Professor X with a beard. Yes, he looks so cool with a beard. It looks intimidating because he doesn't look like the frail dude. He looks like, no, I'm going to kill you right now. Particularly has all the knives. You know, and then I'm like, it's Doug Ramsey. I'm like, when did Doug Ramsey become cool? Mm -hmm. He I literally the had the power of, of translating. Mm-hmm. Not unusual. He has walked in the past. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Let's go on because that was a train wreck. I don't want to revisit. This is a good <laughs> book. Like, this wow. Is, it, this Justice is League book. versus Godzilla versus Kong number six. Oh, boy. Was this, this a fantastic read? <laughs> yeah, it was a fantastic read. This, this whole crossover has been killer. It's been amazing. This book has everything. It has Godzilla, it has the Justice League, it has Mecha Godzilla, it has Kong, it has Batmex, it has everything. It has a Megazord. It literally has a Megazord. Yeah. And it, it's and I, I particularly like how they use the Mecha Godzilla like design, and they kind of hinted that this is taking place after Godzilla versus Kong because uh, yeah. Lex goes, "I've rebuilt Mecha Godzilla." Yeah, this is and then having Damien flying a little mech suit. A little yeah, mech exactly. Suit. Everyone has a mech. Everyone has a mech, and it's like even Red Hood's in the mech, and I'm just like, wow. No, there's no more for no, it's, it's like it's, it's like to stop Godzilla, but Batman goes, save Mothra. <laughs> you know, it's I think this is something they should put as an animated movie. Yes. And put it in the yeah. theater quickly. You have everything, you got capes, you got kaiju, and you have the Legion of Doom. What more yep. do you need in an animated movie? Yeah, exactly. Particularly when you have the Green Lanterns making a Megazord. Wait, did I put that up? Oh, here's did. the Bat Mech. Well, yeah, there you go. And about time this thing showed up. I know, it was like on the, first, the cover of the first issue. But it's just so cool. Because, of course, Batman would have a, mega, a Bat Mech to fight a giant monsters. Like literally, just he built that in ten days. Like what? How? <laughs> like how did he build a mech in ten days? Because he's Batman. Yeah, true. And when you have that's unlimited that's money, Jared, you do whatever you Jared, want. Jared, Jared, that's the obvious answer because that's the Batman. obvious answer exactly because he's Batman and he has access to the Flash. <laughs> and then there it is. There the you go. As Green, a Green Lantern, Lantern formed. As a, a Green Lantern fan, I was like, that is so dope. 
Jared, doesn't that remind you of the New 52? Kind of. It also reminds me of when Kyle Rayner took over for Hal as the Green Lantern. His constructs were like a bunch of anime-inspired ones. Yeah. yeah. You know, by, this, be- by this point, um, Supergirl and Kong are being controlled by Grodd, and course. they just they just show up and they just kicked ass. <laughs> because it's a Kryptonian, what'd you expect? Yeah, no. uh, this has been a great read. There's one more issue left. Um, I'm sorry this is going to end. I know that they can't keep this series running forever, but if you... If you enjoy Justice League, if you enjoy the MonsterVerse, if you enjoy mechs, pick this up. Read this. It's been amazing. Now, here's the question. Can we get a live-action movie with this? Oh. Because can you I imagine don't... a live-action this? They can't even get a Justice League together. <laughs> well, yeah, they can. It's all, it's it's called the Superman movie by James Gunn. That, that's yeah. a Justice League movie. <laughs> If you have enough money, you think it's possible. Very true. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so, this this part, this book, this series has. I was a little skeptical when they announced this. Yeah. But so far, this series has been ten out of ten. Yeah, the thing about it is, like, w- 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 when I reacted to the announcement on my show, I was like, "This is the crossover I did not see coming a mile away." Because how? Why would I? My pro- my thing was. What are the monsters going to do against Superman? And they just take out Superman literally in the first issue. issue. Yeah, first so, so I'm issue. like, well, all right. Hopefully, oh. the Jurassic League cartoon. I enjoyed the Jurassic League um, comics. It was, it was a different take on the Justice League. Yeah. But I'm just like, why do we need that as our... Well, we have this. I'd rather have this than Jurassic League as an animated movie. <laughs> like, if he announced this as the first DCU animated project, I would be singing his praises right now. Yeah. Same here. It's been a great read. And hopefully we'll um, read some more interesting... Hopefully I inspire you guys to read some more books outside of your comfort zone. Definitely read comics. Claudia. Oh, I know what you're saying. Hey, it's not my fault. I like the new 52. I know, I know. And Claudia Next... never apologized for that. Yeah. Always stick to your guns. Never apologize for being a DCU fan or a DC fan or any type of fan. Next up, we're going to look at some Golden Age sales. We have Blue Ribbon Comics number three from 1940, graded a 7.0, sold for $2,640. Jeez. $2,000 for a comic book. Well, yeah, it is for, for, from the Golden Age, so that does yeah. explain it. And it's a cheap for the Golden Age. And oh, yeah. I was about to say, really I'm like, well, what's the catch? The catch is it's not a popular comic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we have. The Hangman number eight from 1943, a 2.5, sold for $1,320. Mm-hmm. A lot of these comics cannot be made today. No, they cannot. <laughs> no, no, no they cannot. yeah, exactly. No. Not in today's climate. Then we have Science Comics number seven from 1940, a CGC 5.0, sold for $1,800. Not bad for a 5.0. You know, we have a um a woman in distress in a red dress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And a mad evil scientist with pointy ears. Mm-hmm. Is that a Klingon? Is that a Vulcan? Yeah, exactly. I was about Klingon, to say. Vulcan. Mm-hmm. Then we have Stars and Stripes Comics number five from 1941. Did you see 4.0 with Britsu pages? That means it. If air hits these pages, they will crumble. So oh for three thousand three hundred and sixty dollars. Wow. So, you know, people still have these comics laying around in their attics or garage sales. You see old comics like this, pick them up. You never know mm-hmm. what they were. Then we have Airboy number three from nineteen fifty one and eight point oh. So for one thousand three hundred and twenty. 
Airboy. What a name. Mm-hmm. What a hero. Yeah. Airboy. Yeah, I just can think of the name. I can just think of the song. Uh, it, it, is his sidekick named Airhead? Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there, Jared. Uh, Thank you. Then we have Detective Comics 79 from 1943. 6.5 sold for $1,020. Why is Robin sitting on a ball? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my. Batman and Robin. Robin unraveled the tangled threads of three lives in Destiny's auction. Now they're selling things, selling people, and it's titled Boy Commandos. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <sighs> My ex turns into Airboy on chilly nights. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, good. I love that. Then we have some rec- re- recommended reading for. No comic book day this week. Alan Scott, Green Lantern number five. Green, it's been an amazing series. Written by Tim Sheridan. Conan, Conan number nine. Um, Joe's Dueling swears by this series. And Salmon Twitch number one. Spinning, spinning out of the Spawn comic book. I don't know who reads Spawn, but you know, there are Spawn fans out there. I do. And then, and then we have X Men ninety seven number one. Of course, they're going to capitalize on the anime instantly, series. Instantly, as soon as I saw the show, this went on my poll list. Nice. Then we have Dungeons and Dragons number three. That's supposed to be number three. If you remember the Saturday morning cartoon of Dungeons and Dragons, this is a little nostalgia bait for everyone. Yeah. And then we have Morning Star number one: A woman and her kids in the wilderness, being Hunted. Will she survive? <laughs> Probably no. Probably not. Uh, I don't think so. I think the kids will survive. I don't think she will. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And now we're going to do some ultimate FOC, which is final order cutoff, which is tomorrow night. If you see any of these covers or comics you like, go to your local comic shop tomorrow and order these comic books for before the cutoffs. So for the first we have Cobra Commander number four, the one in 10 incentive, the one in 25 incentive by Clark, the one in 50 Oliver incentive with the enforcement. What was his first name? You remember anybody? No. I just remember him as no. the enforcer. Mm-hmm. And then we have Catwoman 64, the That's one good. in 25 Lyrics Lee incentive. Meow. He's a meow. <laughs> Somebody gets a lot of bowl of milk. That, clip that. <laughs> Meow. That is going to be my new. Um, That's going to be the audio's that intro. That's going to be the intro. No, no, Jared. No, no. That's got to be Taladia's intro now. Yeah, well, you have to clip that. I make that your intro, Taladia. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Most Finest 26. Yes. The one in 25. Yeah. Hagel Lion, Lion Incentive. Then we have Green Lantern number eight. War, War Journal has been fantastic. The Rather variant. We have Wonder Woman number eight, the Villa Lobos variant. Wonder Woman! Why does she look why does she look like Linda Carter in some way? Well, because she's spinning Taladia. That's a good trick. Because um, Linda Carter is always will be the definitive Wonder Woman. Until Gal Gadot came around. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, what's up, Fedora? It's, it's called him Villa Lobos fake Adam Hughes. Yeah. Yes. Adam Hughes is a legend. Mm-hmm. Villa Lobos will never live up. Mama, you're right. Linda Carter is the goat. Mm-hmm. Raza's been killing it. And then we have the one in 25 Wonder Woman Swaby. Everybody like needs to one. fix their hair. It's a good I like color. I like that cover. Then we have Amazing Spider-Man number 48, the one in 100 Momoko Virgin Bear Incentive. Then we have Jackpot and Black Cat number two. Oh boy. 
-hmm. the one in 25, Arthur Adams. Then we have X Forever X Men, number two, or X Men Forever. One in 25, Arthur Adams and Center, a little mystique. I still think it looks a little weird with her boob being so far off the page. Yeah, I was about to go. I'm like, what is going on there? I was like, did, did she have a surgery that went wrong? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a bad boob job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we have Rise of Powers of X number four, the one in 50, Chew and Center, a little Jubilee. Does anyone care about Jubilee? I, I got to be honest. <laughs> uh, not really. Nah, no. no. I was about to say because I was like, uh, that's I, 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 I will agree with you, Fedora. Our Adam covers all look the same. I like to call them the big head bobble cup, bobble head covers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind yeah. of. I'll give you that. You know, the eyes are far apart than big foreheads. <laughs> then we yeah. have Big Tracy number one, the one in ten, Franca Villa incentive. Dick Tracy, number one, the one in 20, Panosian Incentive. Dan Panosian is a great artist. Then we have Vampirilla, 668, the one in 25, Carla Cohen Virgin Incentive. Then we have Justice Ducks, number 10, oh, two, the one in 10, Forzner Incentive. There you go. I had to throw that vampirella in there. We, we went from a spicy one to a cartoon one. Yeah, exactly. You had to. Uh, and <laughs> that could not have been co contrasted any better. Go go grab some dick, Tracy. Yes, vampirella is right next to dick, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfectly placed. Uh, then we have... Nightwing 113, which is official 300th issue of Nightwing. We got the cover A, cover B by Dan Mora. I love Dan Mora's art. And then we have cover C by Mora, which is probably wrong because I was tired when I did this, but it's not <laughs> Mora. <laughs> Let me find yeah, out. Yeah, it's that. definitely not Mora. It's still good, though. Yeah, it's a good cover. Let me see who made this. I can't believe... It's been that long that Nightwing has reached um, 300 issues. Well, he's a very popular character, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, I, I, his stories has been just as good as Batman. So, mm -hmm. as I look this up, be, be patient with me. No problem. But Nightwing has been probably the Best stories after Batman. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. you know, I I think um, them pushing him to the forefront. Uh, that's the Jamal Campbell um, cover for mm -hmm. the the C cover. Then we have cover D, the Disco Nightwing cover. Yeah. That's a fabulous Antonio. cover. There you go. That's a great one. <laughs> that's a great cover. Then we have the Jim Lee cover. I'm like, why is he doing covers? He's the head of DC. And then are you just... complaining about Jim Lee doing covers? Is that what I'm hearing right now? Yes. Why would you complain about Jim Lee doing covers? Because it's gonna sell out really quick. <laughs> I probably that won't get the score uh, And then we just have the A cover with the with no trade dress, and they're charging you twenty five dollars or more for. It. It, it is a great cover, though. It's cool. And then we have Ultimate Spider-Man number four. The cover A. The talk variant. Then we have the Mahanini, Mahanini variant with the first appearance and cover appearance of Gwen Stacy in the Ultimate Universe. Not bad. I like that cover a lot. Then we have the green variant. 
Sanford Green. Then we have the one in 25 new incentive. That's pretty cool. And then we have the version of uh, the talk arm um, incentive. Damn kids, throw them out the, the window. Just kidding. Then we have Darth Maul, black, white, and red number one. Cover A, cover B, cover C by the great Frank Miller. I'm not a fan of that Frank Miller cover for Darth Maul. I got to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Lee, if you guys ain't selling enough, let me show you how to sell <laughs> He's not wrong. I I don't I Frank Miller's covers for the last year haven't been the greatest. I know he gets a pass because he's a legend. And he and they probably won't tell him no ever. Mm -hmm. He wants to draw a cover. But people will buy him. Yeah. Why is he naked? That's a dark mall. <laughs> that, that that's a good question. I don't know. Why is he naked? Maybe Frank forgot to draw clothes. That would be hilarious. Like, I just forgot. Or then, he, here's the better answer. It's Frank Miller. It's Frank Miller. Then we have a movie variant. I love those. Then I'm we have the, the one in 25 Marquez. I love this. Yes. And then this $100 book is drawn by Frank Miller. And it just no trade dress. It looks like this. And this will probably go for $150 to $200. When it releases, because people still love Frank Miller's art. I like I his not, writing, not his art. I am not buying this. Yes, he does have rubber legs. Yeah. It looks like he has sticks, like little mm -hmm. sticks for fingers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Frank Miller, JRJR. I'd rather have JRJR. I got to be honest. Yeah, same. JRJR. The Sith always rings twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we have there are some reprints that are coming out in June. These comics are all coming out in June, ladies and gentlemen. I think June. Ultimate Universe number one, second printing. Bitch, hitch. Sorry about the 26. That's supposed to be number one. Not bad. Ultimus Universe number two, number one, second printing, the one in 20 for Caselli. That's a cool one. Yeah, that Thor is pretty awesome. I love the design. This design for Ultimate Thor, I like better than the original design for Ultimate Thor. Yep. Then we have Ultimate X Men number one, third printing, Sanford Green. Then we have Ultimate X Men number one, third printing, the one in 25, Momoko. If you haven't read Ultimate X Men, it's manga inspired. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the way she draws and limited wording in the book. Either you're going to be a fan or you're going to hate it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Then we have Secret Wars number five because they have been reprinting the Secret Wars as facsimiles of the originals. And this is a one in 25, which is ridiculous. This is going to cost $25 or more, but people will buy these. Mm -hmm. just, stores will charge $50 to $60, sometimes $80 for these one in 25 facsimiles. Mm -hmm. Then we have Something is Killing the Children by Tenian. It's returning. If you haven't read this, it's a good time to catch up for the other 35 issues if you have time. We got mm -hmm. the cover A, cover B by Jenny Frizen, cover C by Stam. This is a foil, gold foil cover. Mm -hmm. Then we have the 1 in 25 Forbes incentive. The 1 in 50 prison, slightly different than the other prison. I like this one better. And then the 1 in 75 Werther Incentive, another gold foil. And then we have the Dadera Unlockable and the Art Germ Spot Foil. And the 1 in 100 J. Lee Incentive. So these are your books for 
and the odd gem FOC reveal variant. Not bad. Yeah, a lot of covers for this book. The yeah. artwork is great, but there's a lot of covers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Just if, pick whichever and it, artist you want, you're good to go. Hopefully, this gets um put into a series by Netflix. Yeah, maybe it could work. You know. So anything else you guys want to talk about? Well, me and Jared obviously covered Suicide Squad on our, our channel. Yeah. And obviously Joker's coming out next week. And this is a make or break for the game. Yeah, because here's the thing about it is that when you look, because they release and the advertisement they uh, th that they release for like that shows here is what what's gonna happen with the Joker. They release a bunch of patch notes for the game, and mm -hmm. the thing about it, the patch notes fix virtually every problem people have with the game. Short of the story, I'm talking about all the technical fixes. Now the thing is, I've seen plenty of games where they implement a lot of like fixes but ends up breaking other parts of the game so that's why i'm not like we're saved so if they can if if this goes off without a hitch if this is a smooth launch this game has a chance to at least get through season one mm -hmm. will it i'm not convinced yet hmm. and i think this is this the Joker that's supposed to have in the game. Yeah, an, an umbrella. Yeah, exactly. With the what umbrella, yeah. What is this? An Elseworld Joker. Oh. Remember, that's it's weird. based off. It's probably based off of Jared Leto. Yeah, it's based off Jared Leto Joker. But they're going to base off the movies. So the game is that broken that that they need to fix it and patch it. Yeah, literally, it, it has less than 500 players playing the game right now. And that's a lot for a DC. I mean, that's small for a DC game. So really, it's yeah. like, uh, uh, do I think it? Um, if the patch goes well, do I think that it will bring everyone back? No. Do I think no. it will bring some people back and maybe bring in some new people? Yeah. Yeah. That's why, like, me and Jerry, are like, we'll, we'll stream it, yeah. like, when it comes down to... The Joker DLC, but if it if there's still other issues, there's no way me and Jared are gonna come back and play the next DLC. I don't think. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's understandable. I did that happened with um, what game was that? Um, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Oh yeah. my god, it's such a beautiful game. It was broken when they released it. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, if they get if they can manage to keep, well, here's the thing: if war if this launch goes well it could convince warner brothers to not like shut down the game because yeah. obviously if they have all these plans because i want to see how they bring back the justice league because it's obvious they're going to bring back the justice league but it's like they, they need a smooth because if they have a bumpy launch warner brothers can just say you're not worth the investment we're shutting down yeah they can shut down yeah. the servers and basically that's it game over and what they'll focus on is everything will be riding on one dorm and then which is the Wonder Woman game. I do know for a fact that, you know, they were at GDC this year. Same you, think that's in, you think that's in development? What, the Wonder Woman game? Yeah, you think it's still in development? Yes, it I is still in development. Yes, I do think it's still in development. Mm -hmm. I do know for a fact that that game's, because that game's already been announced, there's when no way. They, when, when did they announce it? 2021. A game yeah, the very fact that, I went boots for the very fact that they announced it back then, and we yep. know next to nothing about it. I'm like, I'm a little concerned. It's like I reckon this year they'll they'll push it because knowing for a fact that Suicide Squad, you know, kind of flopped when it comes down to mm -hmm. expectations. So it's kind of like everything is riding on one doom and now, and if that does well, Warner Brothers will have to do a second thinking and say, look. Wonder Woman did well. Hogwarts Legacy did numbers. Why don't we make another, another character like Superman and give him his own video game or give Green Lantern a video game or, or, or better, yeah, Godzilla King Kong video game. That would be pretty cool. I, I don't think Wonder Woman's game is in the forefront of development. I think that they're going to be more focused on 
a Batman game before anything else because it's been a while since we've had a Batman game. Well, the Batman, I do know the Batman game that they had planned was ditched as soon as that got leaked. So it was, was the day when we. Yeah, go ahead. Um, WB basically planned a um, Batman Beyond game, which was going to have Damian Wayne as Batman. It wasn't going to be an Arkham game. Now, Warner Brothers can't do another Arkham game. That's the thing. Warner yeah. Brothers can't go back and do Arkham because the fact is, how are you going to set? How are you going to tie it to after the events of Arkham Knight? The only thing you can do is go back in time and do Arkham Origins sequel. That's the only thing you could do, but that's limiting yourself there. So that's you know, why it's like I was surprised that um, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. That's that was a rock steady game, correct? Yeah, yes, it was. That's, it is a rock steady. I, I was game. so surprised that they use their teams are usually good. They usually don't have games that are this buggy and broken. Mm-hmm. But well, like service, remember. Like Rachel said, they probably will focus more on Grand Theft Auto Six. Well, that's they a probably rush, different rush rush studio. That's a different oh, studio. Different studio. Okay. Ro- yeah, but Rock- here's Rock- the thing on that. Here's the thing on that. I don't necessarily blame a hundred percent of this on Rocksteady because Warner Brothers forced them to make a live service. Yeah. This is Warner Media and Warner Brothers Discovery's fault mm-hmm. because Warner Warner Media at the time. They were pushing for live service. They saw the trendy stuff back in 2016, 2017, which was Destiny, Division, those types of games, which were which were, were very well popular for live service games. Yeah. And then it dipped after 2017. Yeah, but Warner, I, Brothers kept, Warner Brothers kept on pushing for that, and then Warner Brothers Discovery doubled down on it. And it's like, you guys are idiots. Like, Why are you doubling down on live service games, knowing for a fact that Suicide Squad flopped? You know, I... I didn't have any interest in the Suicide Squad versus Justice League when it was announced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And is it a a battle royale type game? Nope, no. Or, really? No. I would have thought that's what they would have went for. No. So Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a uh, multiplayer game which is set in the Arkhamverse where you, you got to play with the friends and whatnot. Yeah. And you get to explore different Earths um, along along those story missions and whatnot. And um, you face off against the Justice League, which isn't the real Justice League, by the way. We, we I'm convinced it's not the real JL. They, they, they give you plenty of hints that you didn't kill the actual Justice League. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and the fact is that we face off against Brainiac and he gets Brainiac turns into Justice League members. When you fight him. <laughs> well, not only that, after you beat each one, he infuses certain powers of the Justice League into his troops. Like, the, yeah. it, 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 in the upcoming update, we're going to fight guys that have Green Lantern's power. So I'm like, if we really kill the actual Justice League, how is he still infusing their powers into his troops? <laughs> Comic Embrace is a shit game. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. You're not it has wrong. Problems. It has problems. It has problems. It has problems. That's why one of us needs to focus now on story-driven games. Give us the Superman game that everyone's been asking for. Give us the Flash game people want. Give us a Justice League game people want. And I, will, I, I, I need another Injustice game. Give me Injustice 3, please. No. no oh, I, I can, t- I can tell you. No. Right no. I can tell you right now. The story of that is so Jared. contrived. The amount of stuff they have to change in order for that story to make sense, it make it it, it astounds me. Jared, it's going to happen. Injustice 3 is happening. I I'm telling know. you that. It's happening, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> and I'm going to oh. play it, because well, whatever. The well, then Justice, then Justice just showed up in the last um, Adventures of Superman comic well, last year. Yeah. Which they wasted. Yeah, I know. It should have been a lot better. But, it should have been an actual fight. Them. It should have been an actual fight. Instead, John Ken hugs Injustice Superman. I mean, it's like WB drank too much EA Kool Aid. Yes, uh, WB WB thought they could be the next EA, mm-hmm. and and they're thinking that right now. But it's not working out for them. They're gonna backtrack quick and fast. I'll tell you that right now. I, I will say I I was uh, I did really enjoy um, Multiversity. 
Yeah, that's Multiverse. a good one. That, that is so much fun. It's coming yeah, back soon, I coming, believe. Yes, that game is coming back in a couple of months' time. Uh, I, multiverses. I, I wouldn't mind microtransactions in that game. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can, I can just imagine you guys just be like, we could do a tournament or whatever, right? Yeah, we could uh, do a bracket tournament. We could, yeah, that would be pretty that would be pretty cool. But I know Max has been trying to get us to play. Uh, what was that Disney game? Uh, Speedstorm. Speedstorm. I have it on my PS5. I have it on my PC. I have I played it like once. I'm just like, I hate, Mar- I, I hate I hate card games. But mm. I've always hated card games. I hate Mario Kart. We, we have to get him on multiverses because that's a free to play game. He yeah. can't deny. He can't deny that it's a free to play game. Is that crossplay, Claudia? Yeah, yes, it yeah, is. It's cross play. Yeah. I, I got to play the alpha. I got to play the beta. And fortunately for me, I know there was a mod at one point where you had the Man of Steel suit and the Batman eighty nine skin. You know, people modded the game, and W W B immediately shut that down as soon as people people modded the game. That's why they closed. You know, they closed the beta down, and just to fix those things and. Basically, it's behind the paywall. It's a live service game, so that's going to be it. That's for yeah. what Multiverses is. Same with Injustice. Injustice will be live service. Same with... Um, I don't like, think they'll we'll... make Injustice live service. Well, Injustice it is. did have, it did it have is. microtransactions, but it wasn't that it bad. Is. It, it I mean, wasn't it... as bad compared... The, the problem with Injustice 2 went with when they did the tie-ins for Justice League, the movie... Because the problems, the problem came up when okay, the, the Batman and the Flash suits were cool. I get why they just recycled the Wonder Woman suit because it's her same suit from Wonder Woman to to BBS. The problem arises when he gets like Superman, where literally all it was was his S the, um, for Cyborg. Exactly. It's just his arm cannon for Aquaman. The suit was good, but you didn't have the option to turn him into Jason Momoa. Yeah. Uh, so it's still the Aquaman Justice League suit, but it's just a white guy. And I'm like, yeah. I want the Momoa with the beard and long hair. <laughs> and, 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 and what makes things like the way I see one of it is looking at they're going to go back to the old formula with premier skins. Like you have to pay for the skins. Like I'm in fine Justice. With that because if it's a good skin, if they bring in the DCEU skins, that, that's an automatic buy for me. I mean, they they did that with Injustice One. They did they did like for the Man of Steel skin, New Fifty Two, uh, Red Sun. You know, you had to pay for those. So I can just imagine Injustice Three going back to that formula, because mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I I'm telling you, Brucifer, that's what's going to be the case now going forward. They're not going to go down the route of doing hey, we we'll, we do gear score and all of that. They're going to do that. Is the route. biggest like stupid thing ever, particularly if it's in a shooter. At least with Suicide okay, Squad, well. he, he, here's the way Suicide Squad de- does it that's actually not that bad, is that you really don't have to, because my problem with gear score is that to constantly advance, to like progress in the story, you have to keep pausing every time you pick up a new gun because the dam- because you need to have a high damage gun. But with Suicide Squad, you don't necessarily need to. Wow. Mm-hmm. But it, it's going to be interesting to see because... From what I, I can tell you is that Netherrealm are cooking for Injustice 3. That I do know that for a fact. I do know WB Montreal has got two games in development. Same with Monolith. Monolith has got two games in production. One of them is the Wonder Woman game and another DC game. And I do know that Rocksteady is working on something else after Suicide Squad. Mm. So I can tell you all of that because I have inside knowledge. Just saying. I've been doing research. Nice. But I just I think it's a good time to end the show. Mm-hmm. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for showing up, hanging out. If you haven't subscribed to Jared Comics League and Taladia Plays, the links for the channels are in the chat. Please hit the like, subscribe, and comment after the video if you're watching on the replay. It's been well. I will see you guys tomorrow night on Monday Madness. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you for showing up. Bye-bye.